One of the core features that makes the web so usable is a standard and a set of agreements among websites about how they deliver content and how they deliver the code that runs in the browser. So for example, you have one web browser that you install on your computer and then you can browse any site on the internet. Imagine if different sites decided that they didn't want to agree on HTML and one site wanted to use something else. Maybe another site wanted to send you some C-sharp to run in your browser or something like that rather than JavaScript. You'd have to start installing like one web browser to browse some sites, another web browser to browse other sites, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for IoT devices, this is kind of where we are. If you get a home security system, for example, for your house, that home security system probably comes with an app for your phone. And that's how you interact with the home security system. If you get, you know, a, a smart music system uh, that, you know, kind of combines multiple speakers located in different parts of your home into one, uh, you know, large stereo system, that, guess what, comes with an app for your phone and its own little broken web interface. And so, you know, the idea is that, you know, the, the IoT space, because it doesn't have the set of standards that really allowed the web to grow, fractures things. And that fracturing is more than just forcing me to install different tools and, and different apps. It also means that these systems cannot interoperate with each other. They don't have a common language for exchanging data and, provi and for providing interfaces. And so one interesting project, I think, in this space is this um, a project uh, called that refers to itself as the physical web. This is something that's being led by Google. And the goal here is to bring the same sort of standardization that, that uh, helped the web grow to IoT devices. So imagine I walk up to an IoT device and instead like a smart toaster, and instead of asking me to install an app, it delivers me a web page. And that web page provides the interface for that device. That web page can use JavaScript. That web page can interact with me. And somehow that web page needs to be able to communicate with that device directly. But the, the experience is a lot more seamless. I can use a web browser to interact with the device, so I don't have to install any software. And this is a, you know, a potential sort of a common language for all of these devices to use. So you know again, I can walk up. I, uh, I tap something, you know, the device basically advertises, hey, I'm here, I'm in your physical environment. Like, let's say I want to pay a parking meter. So if you've used smart parking meters, you've probably had the experience of having them say, oh, you need to install this app so that you can use the parking meter, which is really irritating. Why can't I just walk up to the parking meter, have it send me a URL, which is a, you know, a standard that's already very, very well supported by my, my, by my device. I open that URL on my web browser, I interact with it, and then you know, I pay for parking, I let the system know where my car is, whatever. Um, and so this is an interesting approach, I think, but it also, again, highlights one of the really, really uh, problematic parts with today's Internet of Things, which is somehow, you know, I think when we think about the evolution of the internet, we have to acknowledge the fact that we got super lucky. Somehow, these standards took off to the point where I don't need 10 different web browsers to browse the internet. There's one common internet. Getting different companies and different stakeholders and different people who have the potential to make money from closed ecosystems to agree on a standard like that is really hard. And somehow, with the internet, we lucked out and it just all worked out. The early days of the IoT are making it look like that may not be the case. And it may take a long time to integrate these multiple systems together. There may be competition and there may be players in the market that try to freeze out other people by refusing to interoperate with their devices. Because if I don't interoperate with your home security system, maybe that makes you more likely to buy the home security system that I make that does interoperate with your smart toaster or whatever. So, you know, this is a, it's interesting, it's going to be interesting to see how this space evolves. I think, unfortunately, you know, again, we don't have the broad standardization that went along with the early web. And so this is going to be a battle that we're going to have to fight where hopefully consumers won't be the ones that lose.